Blackmagic just released their newest version of DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 18.1, and this release has a lot of new updates. I'm not going to go through all of them, at least not in this particular video, but today I'm going to show you five of my favorite new features. So let's take a look. The first thing that we're going to look at is now you can pull multiple sections from your source clip. So what we can do is find a section of the footage that we want to use, hit I for in and then O for out, right click and choose the option for convert in and out to a duration marker. And then we can find another piece of our footage that we like, do the same exact thing, hit I for in where we want to start and O for out where we want to end. And then one of the things that we can do is just grab it from our source viewer right into the timeline and it will only contain that section between the in and out. You'll notice here if I go to the beginning of the timeline and if I go to the beginning of the in and out section for the second one that we did, they're the same frame. Now if we wanted to do the same with the other portion of the clip that we created, right click over that section, choose set in and out from duration marker. We'll drag that down into the timeline, bring everything back to the front of the clips and you'll see that those are both obviously the same frame. The other thing they included, if you head up to the playback menu and go down to previous, you have an option for marker now. So instead of clicking around, you can use a keyframe and the same thing with next. This next feature is really cool. So we'll look at this clip right here. Now you'll notice in this clip, I've already keyed out the sky. Now you can bring in your own footage of the sky and composite that on your footage. But here we're going to make an artificial sky. So the opacity starts at zero. Let me bring that up and you'll notice how the sky comes into view. The option we have right underneath it is cloud opacity. So if I bring that up, you'll notice that now clouds are appearing in the sky. And there's a ton of options underneath there. So we can change the scale of the clouds depending on what footage we have, whatever makes sense. You can change the shape of the clouds. You also have an option for tilt. There's also an option for cloud detail. For this particular footage, I'm not going to really increase the detail too much. It looks more natural to me with less detail. The one underneath that is cloud fill, pretty self-explanatory. Again, I think there's enough clouds in the sky as there is, so I'm not going to increase that too much. And the one underneath that is cloud time, so this would be as if the clouds were moving through the sky. This would be a good use case for keyframes, but we're not actually going to use it in this case. And the option that I skipped over is cloud contrast. So this is the contrast between the sky and the actual clouds and how well they blend together. If we head to the sky position portion of the effect, I'm going to change from track foreground to use FX tracker. The reason I'm doing that is because track foreground will be if you bring in your own footage and I'm choosing use FX tracker because I actually tracked with the tracker within Resolve. For example, here you can see that red and blue cross and I use those trees to track the footage. So now, whereas if we didn't track it, it would just be a hole in our footage and we could see the clouds behind it. Now the clouds actually move with our footage. And I have to say, this is a very convincing effect. The next thing that we're going to look at is how alpha is used in our nodes on the color page. So here I'm using the depth map effect. And what I've done is isolated our subject from the background. In previous versions of Resolve, what we had to do is use the effect on one node, create our depth map, where the white area is the area that we want to affect. If we try to make an adjustment on that particular node, for example, if I shift everything over to blue, it doesn't take into account the key that we've done. So what we have to do is that node that we have the effect on, we take the blue output and we feed that into the next node. If we make an adjustment on the next node, now we can see our change. However, in this newest version, we can do everything in one node. And the way that we do that is we right click, head to OFX alpha, make sure that enable is checked and then use for mixing. And as mentioned, now any changes that we make can be done on that same node. This effect is actually pretty cool too. So here's a clip of me talking with wind and a couple other background noises. All right, right now I'm facing the receiver. I'm about maybe 50 feet away, turning around. But if we head up to our inspector and, and into the audio section, there's a new option for voice isolation. So all that we have to do is make sure that we enable that. And now if we play through our footage, you'll notice that my voice is much clearer and that background noise was suppressed. All right, right now I'm facing the receiver. I'm about maybe 50 feet away, turning around. The last thing that I wanted to show you is how they've improved everything with uploading to YouTube. First of all, one of the options that they included is that now you can upload a thumbnail 
directly within Resolve. Just provide it the path that the file is located and it will include it in the upload. Now the visibility I leave at private and there's a reason for that which I'll explain at the end of this video. And they also included another option in the top right, review before upload. And I'm going to explain what that does and how that's also useful. Once the render is complete, it says waiting for upload. So this is when you can now find the file on your computer, watch through it, make sure there's no mistakes. Once you do that and you're ready to upload, you can head to the top right under render queue, right click and choose the option for upload to YouTube. In this case, I didn't upload a thumbnail, but the description and the title, everything went up there correctly. So it looks good. The one thing you may notice is that the description lacks any preset information that you put in there. So this is why we wanted to leave it under private. If we head down to settings and then we choose the option for upload defaults, now you can sort of do a copy paste and put that into your description. There was a lot more in this release of Resolve, which I didn't cover in this video. So if there's something specific that you wanna look at, maybe a more in-depth tutorial on the sky replacement, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.